this is not the time to forget anything as I reassemble so making sure all the screws are put back where they came from some of them not in the easiest of places to get to so uh, rather than remove the oil cooler I thought I'd get in there with an 8 mil put it in, feed it in by hand and then spend the next 20 minutes tightening it up <laughs> a quarter turn at a time Fun, fun, fun for all the family because I need to adjust the tick over and I've got an oil cooler in the way. I can't get through it. Got to go around it and most screwdrivers are straight and if I had a bent screwdriver it would be very difficult to, so what do you do? Take the oil cooler off or fight it? <laughs> fight it! I know where it is. I know where you are. You're up there somewhere. I know where you are. If anyone spots it before me, let me know. It's in there somewhere. Lovely band champion. Whilst the battery's having a little charge. Let's get its new air filter installed. Change of plan. Air filter into snorkels. And snorkels just fit beautifully on. <laughs> Figure it out, Alex. Well, this has got to go. It's decade old. To me, it's still capable of lubricating, maybe not to an amazing extent, but it's still capable of lubricating the engine as it is, probably have uh, petrol in it. Although I would expect the level to be a little, mm, maybe it's a little over max. No idea, really, yeah. just quantifiable. Let's check out the old oil filter. It's got itself a nice little impact right about there oh so you've been grounded out look at that flipping neck so the bikes hit the ground hard and the exhaust shows the same so blimey andy have you been wheeling it have you i think you have let's get this old filter off it shall we i always wear gloves because old engine oil is toxic. You wouldn't want that on your fingers, would you? Okay, let's try this tool first. Nice and easy, it just straps over and then you do it up and lefty-loosey. If you've got some whirring noises, it's because the battery's just getting a bit of a charge. So righty-tighty's that way, lefty-loosey's this way. Yeah, it's moving. Might just be able to finish it off by hand. Finish him. <laughs> Spin it. Oh, it's just a Filtrex. Wow. That wasn't as exciting as I'd hoped. Right, let's tip it out. Look at that. <laughs> Handy. Have you been wheeling? You have, haven't you? Oh, let's clean myself up a bit. That's such a messy part. The actual sump bong right underneath the engine. Just pop in your favourite hexy bit. Crack it off. You can undo it by hand if you want. And yes, horrible stinky black oil is going to come out. That's what we expect. There it goes. It's flowing really well. For 1040, that's flowing as if it were full of petrol. And it does smell a little bit like white spirit. I'll just pop that on Andy's damaged oil filter. Clean myself up a bit. 
Hey, you're over the exhaust. Hey, come on, you messy pup. I'll leave that for a bit. Whilst it's dripping, I think we should have a look at the uh, sump bomb. Have a little investigation on it. So it does have a magnetic tip. And you can see that it has collected some metal along the way. What I'm pointing, what I mean is just above the threads, can you see it all collecting? You know, that ain't so bad. I, I can see a little bit of ferrous material there, but generally you'd see it coming right off the top of the, uh, in a messy engine, generally. In a messy engine, you'd see it coming right off the top of the magnet. But in this case, it's all gonna stuck to the bottom. So that's gonna need a really good clean. I don't want to reintroduce ferrous material back in, but you can see it all attached to the magnet as I rotate the magnet. So it's all gonna stuck itself to the bottom of the magnet. Yay. And you'd say, good job, you know, you got the cleaned up, Alex, good job. You got a new oil filter ready to put on. Let's bang some oil in. And Alex is like, it's just not how they roll. See that little baby there? That little baby there is a massive great big 22. And I just happen to have a 22 ready to crack it off. What's in there? Any thoughts? And most Japanese motorcycles, so we've got more engine oil coming out, so it's a good thing. Most Japanese motorcycles, you just get the uh, oil filter, probably without the, uh, I've just done a wheelie dent, which we know Andy done. It's got to be Andy. Whereas the Ducatis, they, and like KTMs, you know what I'm going to say now, don't you? They have a mesh filter that nobody ever cleans. Oh no, 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 no. There you go. Look at all that trash on there. See, this is what was bothering me. I, I was told that the motorcycle had done maybe four miles. And you don't get that amount of trash on your filter and uh, that amount of ferrous material over four miles. Mm, what a shame. Anyway, this filter needs a really good clean. Thoroughly, thoroughly clean. Um, don't know if it's going to pop off of there, but I do know I'm going to use the uh, old stale petrol that came out of the motorcycle to clean that. So this is the old petrol that came out of the motorcycle and it smells of white spirit. But yeah, that amount of, <clears throat> those amount of metal particles. So yeah, this filter hasn't been cleaned in a very long time. But then I guess this one's gonna pick them up. It was an absolute pig to clean as well because they were all stuffed in, mostly hidden. I'm sure I've got bits of metal in my fingers now. Feels like it. If you're gonna ride something hard, I get it. Put it on a dyno or something like that, you know, beat the hell out of it. But all of these little, this is not magnetic, this is just a screen just to catch any bits of, but you'd hope that that's aluminium rather than steel. I don't know if any of it's magnetic. But if it's steel, it would be gears, bearings, if it's aluminium, it'd be bits of casing. You see what a pain in the ass it is to get off the screen. Get off. And then I'll just stay at it until I've got this screen looking really nice. And uh, I don't think petrol's gonna help remove it. The magnet's holding on to it, but at least it's making this sump bung beautiful and clean and looking fresh. So annoying. Right. It's been dripping for a little while. I'm going to give it a racing high filtro just to start it off in its new life. What I'm liking is they're pre oiled. 
and we'll pop that oil filter in. Cool. Give it a tightening by hand, and we're done. That's all it needs. Next is not to knock things over, huh, Alex? Okay, one tidy looking sunburn. Ready to live a life. Let's have a look. Tighten it up really isn't exciting. Just give it a nip. There we go. We are done. Next oil change, I don't want to see no particles on you, okay? You'll be nice now. Okay, I like. Time to pop some oil in. I've decanted the Shell Advance. I'm going to be the first to admit that no one is perfect in this life, and that includes me. This, you would have seen me tightening up, and I didn't make sure it was near the, near the flange was not perfect and I ended up crushing it as it went in and I thought when I took the video I was like yeah I'm not happy with that went to put some oil in and I didn't put that much in to be fair and then I saw the first drip and I just stopped at that point pulled the strainer off and I damaged the uh, aluminium washer so uh, story of my life now I'm gonna have to wait a few days for and I'm ordering a genuine one, <laughs> it's got to be a Ducati. I make mistakes, I'm not perfect. Sorry, Andy, but at least I didn't do that. Thanks for watching.